first pick in the 2014 NBA Draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers select Andrew Wiggins from Toronto and the University of Kansas. First pick two years in a row. Yay, Canada. So joining me to discuss this, uh, Drew Ebanks is founder of On Point Basketball. Brian Daly is joining us from Montreal as well. Now, normally Brian does news, but he's also the author of Canada's Other Game Basketball from Naismith to Nash. You two guys got to be happening. What do you think, Brian? Well, listen, it's uh, thrilling to be, uh, to be able to witness this two years in a row. And for somebody who's been playing the game for 30 years and knows what it was like in the dark ages of the 1980s, to see young men from uh, the Toronto area, uh, particularly uh, to be on the world's biggest stage, uh, certainly we thought that Steve Nash and his rise uh, was going to be uh, uh, epoch making. What does it mean when we have uh, the number one pick two years in a row from Canada? Only time will tell. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you look at this, Drew, people are saying this wasn't the strongest draft, but we had two Canadians. Andrew Wiggins was number one, but Nick uh, Stockus, and then number 18 was Tyler Ennis as well. So, the, you know, there's three Canadians really high in the draft. It's incredible. I mean, what's happening right now, the growth in Canadian basketball, it's going through the roof. To have those three guys uh, who I know very well, and in the second round also, Dwight Powell, that's four Canadians drafted. Canada now has the second most NBA players of any country uh, behind the U.S. We've surpassed France now, and it's just continuing to blossom. Okay, now, uh, Brian, why do you think this is happening now? Look, there are several factors, and I mentioned this in Canada's other game. A big factor is just plain old immigration. You know, one of the uh, side benefits of the increased number of immigrants uh, from uh, the Caribbean, Africa, and Asia is that in those parts of the world, uh, basketball, soccer are very big, and so even when the, they have children, when they come over here, those children are obviously uh, inherit, in, uh, inheriting uh, that love for basketball and soccer specifically. Then you have, of course, the rise of, the, uh, of Steve Nash, and I can't under, uh, underestimate the uh, importance of the Raptors. It's been talked about by all the players who were drafted yesterday and many others of that generation. I was there living in Toronto in 95 when the Raptors tipped off. Then Vince Carter mania hit a few years later. And when kids see that in their own backyards, they want to follow in those footsteps. Uh, you know, I buy both those arguments uh, to a degree, Brian. But, uh, Drew, when you think of immigration, mm -hmm. baseball is played in the Caribbean. There's all those players that came out of the Dominican Republic, for instance. You know, and, and you talk about the Vince Carter effect. Why didn't the Blue Jays have the same effect uh, in, in terms of baseball in Canada? It's hard to say. I mean, I think... Uh, the fact, uh, Brian made a great point, the fact that the Raptors were kind of winning at a time through Vince, and it's unfortunate with baseball, with the Jays, they won too, but it didn't kind of offshoot the same way. I think uh, basketball is such an easy sport to play. All you need is a ball. You can go outside and play it anywhere. Um, some of the other sports have kind of priced themselves out of uh, you know certain groups in terms of the access for it. So I think for, with basketball, it's just so easy. Uh, the NBA also does a tremendous job of marking its players and they're they're visible they have no helmets on you know nothing to cover their faces so people can see uh, what they look like and again we have to give Vince Carter a lot of props because what he did in his time here all the players right now talk about it Pat you know it's interesting Brian the other component uh I'm concerned about because I've been a coach for 35 years various sports is coaching ahead in Canada of what they're doing in the United States it's underrated. I think right now uh, the difference between Canada and the United States is that in Canada it's just not a career. I had to give up coaching a club team in town because I live out in the suburbs because it was just too much of a commute for me personally and there was no compensation for gas. Even though I love coaching and I do still coach in my suburb, this, uh, this is one of the factors across Canada is that outside of the CIS and a few community colleges and high schools, it's not a career. So. The quality of coaching has is, is, is gotten much better. What we need to see now, of course, is continued growth. And I should remind people, we have a professional basketball league in Canada called the National Basketball League, league of Canada, which is in, it's going into its fourth year, and it finally has a TV deal. That's never happened before. So I think you're going to see, once the industry around the players grows here in Canada, you'll see more players staying here longer and longer. You know, the other component of this, Drew, of course, is that these guys are young guys. Uh, you know, a couple of them have gone to university one year, two years of university. In many other sports, it takes a long time to get to the pros. These guys could be playing next year. Is, is that correct? 
Oh, yeah, they're going to be playing pretty much, you know, to start the season. And if not for the NBA's rule to have, you know, you have to be one year in college in the States, you know, a guy like Andrew Wiggins, they were talking about him going number one last year, Pat. So mm. it's a matter of just getting the guys in. Um, you're going to have to do a lot of development because they're young, they're raw. But that's what the NBA is. They develop players through teams and they base it on potential you know guys could be there for four years and be seasoned vets at the college game and by the time they get out uh, they look at them as washed up and and kind of like they've hit their ceiling these guys like Andrew Wiggins, Tyler Ennis, uh, you know, Jabari Parker in the States, Julius Randle, they look at them as having so much upside. So, it, you know, it's a, it's a quandary there. You know, do you want to develop these young guys or do you want somebody that's, that's already developed? Yeah, good point. And talk about potential, uh, you know, Brian, Team Canada's got to be looking good for the next few years. But will these guys, Nash didn't play for Team Canada. Will these no. guys? Listen, it's crucial. Um, uh, Steve Nash uh, certainly is back in the fold as the general manager of Canada basketball, and he's a big reason why the turnout the last couple of years has been good. Unfortunately, we failed to qualify for the world championship. So this is a crucial time for Team Canada. Uh, there is going to be a qualification process for the 2016 Olympics, which will begin next year. And that's where we'll really see, actually, even sooner than that, we'll see uh, whether uh, Steve Nash is able to get everybody to show up to training camp, which is happening just next month where they'll do exhibition games through July and August. If we can get the Wigginses, the, the Ennises, Stauskas, all this golden generation of Canadian ballers to show up, and they're all such unselfish players, we're not going to have ball hogs out there. If they all show up, I think we can see big things. Maybe not for real, but for 2020, for Tokyo, I'm keeping my eye on 2020 Tokyo. Guys, uh, we're all keeping an eye on this sport. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Brian Daly, take care of those kids in the background. Give them a few tips. <laughs> For sure, Pat. Brian Daly joining us from outside, obviously, his house in his front yard. And Drew Ebanks is the founder of On Point Basketball. Drew, great to have you in here. Hey, thanks a lot for having me.